We're recording. You're listening to the Tuna Up and Jam podcast. Ready? Go. Go, 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 go. This is episode number four, Tune Up and Jam podcast. Yeah! Tune up, turn up, get down and start jamming. Once again, hello and konnichiwa, as they say in Japan. It is the Tune Up and Jam podcast. My name is Rich, and immediately to my left we have Chris. Konnichiwa, Rich. Konnichiwa, Chris. And on my right we have Francis, as always. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. And um, today we have a guest right across from me, somebody I'm very familiar with. His name is Dane Meyer, and he is from the local band here in L.A. called Finding X. What's up, Dane? Howdy. How's it I'm going? not going to say konnichiwa. I'm not going to say konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You're not going to be cool. You just said it. Oh. You're not going to be part of the Diggum crew and say konnichiwa? <laughs> nah. nah. All right. You're actually probably pretty cool for saying that. You know, <laughs> we're kind of dorky. <laughs> so anyway, I have one question to start off with, and it's actually not my question. Um, okay. It's about Finding X. Is it a math thing? I have no clue. You don't have any clue. Have you no didn't name clue. It? it. No, it just. <laughs> oh yeah, how about finding X? Okay. Uh, Dude, I love that name. Like right, right when I saw it, I was like, it, it's so. And I, I hope this isn't offensive. That it's cool. It's so L.A. No, should shouldn't we establish that uh, finding X is the name of Dane's band? Yes, finding X is the name of Dane's band. Yep. Here in L.A. Yeah, and and wasn't there a band in L.A. that was like X or Z? I remember a band kind of called Post. Z. Punk kind of eighties. I remember a local X. I think it was called. Was there a local X? I don't know. Somebody. I'm sure somebody's going to write in and tell us everything there is to know about X. But mm. it's like you guys don't know anything. Which yeah. And it's finding X, the letter X, not E X, right? Yep. Finding Just X. X. Well, sounds like a, cool. sounds like a math reference. Well, that's yeah. That's that's yeah. why Francis said it last night. He said finding X is that a math reference? I said, oh my gosh, that sounds exactly what, like like you're like you're uh, like you're solving a math problem. But that's. I don't want to say, you know, because then it becomes math rock, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's that's more the, well, are you progressive? Are you a progressive band? No. Okay. Definitely not. And so you're not like a Rush or anything like that? I would, I would love that because they have killer bass lines. I'm also a bassist. Yes, we he is for, a bassist. forgot to say that. Yeah, we did forget to say that. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Chris, take it away. We have some, <laughs> we have some common ground and somebody else to lead the drummer in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure he's on point and doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> winging it half the time anyway. <laughs> it's a drum thing. It's a drum thing. Yeah. yeah so. That's awesome. So, so Dane, you are currently uh, in the summer before your senior year of high school. Yep. That's it, it's crazy. That's an exciting time on a lot of fronts. Oh, yeah. On a lot of fronts. And uh, I'm curious, why the bass? This is actually like a very good story behind this. Once upon a time in like third grade, I wanted to play the guitar like every other third grade boy. It was, it was, I want to be like, oh yeah, I want to be Slash. I want to play the rock and roll. I want to be so cool. So I got like a very terrible, terrible guitar, guitar center for like $100. And I was playing it and it just looked cool. It just looked really cool. It didn't sound amazing at all. But so... I started like playing more and playing more. I learned like two songs, two songs were it. And I was like, okay, I'm done. Then I said to my dad, I want to do more music. What should I do? And my dad, he's been doing music for many, many years, for more years than I've been alive. And basically said, you have big hands. You should play the bass. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. He got me this my first bass, which was a Fender Mustang, a uh, three-quarter scale, and I was just fell in love with it. It was just very fun. I One of the first songs I learned was Seven Nation Army, and the Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses taught it to me because he was a parent at the school that I was going to. So that's a little fun thing. And, I, and then I just went on from there, and I just started learning and learning. Right on. How cool is it? To, I, I had a musician as a father. How cool is it to be the son of a musician? And like you're like, yeah, I want to get a bass, and you get a really nice instrument from Jump. You know, like you get nice gear and a nice instrument from Go. It's always really nice. My dad is the type of person where it's like, 
oh, I'm not going to buy anything less than standard because it will only increase in value. So it's an investment. And he basically invested in me in music because he saw my potential and decided, hey, I'm going to stick with him and push him forward to music, basically. Uh, that's, that's so cool. That's so cool. I, I uh, like when I started playing music, my dad was the same way. Was like, I, or I got hand me down gear, but it was always decent gear. It wasn't like the parent that goes, Well, we, I saw a guitar in Walmart and, uh, <laughs> you know, picked it up and got the first take. And nah, you had nice gear. Yeah, I just had to buy my own from scratch. I had to <laughs> claw my way up the ladder, but, you know, but that's the way it is with drummers, I guess. You know. <laughs> You don't get a hand about here. Here's your first snare. Yeah, I don't, yeah, your first snare, drumsticks, nothing. Just paper route. Go get something to beat on. That's about it. Pots, pans, whatever. It Dane, is. I was I was hoping your story was going to be something like you know I started playing the guitar, but then I noticed that chicks really dig bass players a whole. <laughs> That's lot another more. thing. My dad says yeah. that, like, oh, be a bass player because. Chicks, chicks always tend to go to the bass player. I'm like, really? That's, oh, that's I true. I want to go to that. And also, he says, if you're like a dependable bass player, you will get gigs hey. always because there's there's a million guitarists. He he's always said to me, if you're a bass player and you sing backup vocals, you have the world in your hand because once my dad was auditioning for a band, and the only reason they didn't take him because he didn't do backup vocals, and then since I'm also a bassist and I'm a real I say, I call myself a reliable bassist. Well, I'm always at practice, probably one of the first ones in most of my bands. But basically, uh, basically. basically. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, I got that. If, you, if you're, <laughs> my dad says, if you're a bassist and you're reliable and you sing the backups, you have the key to the world and you'll get all the chicks and all the ladies. I, I like your dad. <laughs> he like I, I said, we got to get him in here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're right, though. I mean, you got all three bases covered. Bases covered. <laughs> uh, no, being on time, being reliable, that's absolutely right. I mean, and then playing bass, obviously, if you're on point with the bass, because we've all played, well, obviously not Chris probably as much, but Francis and I have played probably with tons of bassists who just couldn't hold it together, you know what I mean? Just couldn't hold down the, the tempo or whatever. And then the singing, of course. Yeah, I mean, that's probably for anybody. The singing part, you know, even as a drummer, it's nice to be able to say, yeah, I, I can sing some backup or I can, you know, like that. It's just like a bonus that people love to know that you can do if they need it or if mm -hmm. they want to put a little extra. So you do sing in, yeah. your, in, your, in your band? I sing backups. I don't, I've only like s sang in like a, the lead vocals once and it was, I sang like a Queens of the Stone Age song mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, Dane has a deep voice. He's gonna do it because I was in. It was the my school band, and they just had girls, and I was just like, "Sure," and it sounded good because I just kind of sounded very terrible, and I just sounded like very deep, and that's all you kind of needed to sound for that song. And it was like, "Oh, that song's so good!" I forgot the lyrics when we were performing, and it still sounded amazing because I just kind of <laughs> mumbled. Chris doesn't know anything about that. That's <laughs> <what> <laughs> I make up words and mumble through stuff all the time. <laughs> that's not the important part. Well, that's the reliable part, though, because you get through it no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it still sounds good, and people go, eh, Dane's great, Dane's great. Right? Little do they know. Little, yeah. little do but they that's know. That's the reliability part, right? You're going to pull through no matter what. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, Dane, I've been dying to know, and I, I'm jumping into this quick, but since you brought this case in here, what what is what is un underneath this hard shell case, case is, right here? That one's my baby. That's my... A Nash bass. That's my Nash jazz bass that I got last year, the beginning of the school year, so like September ish. And that I've played a lot of basses. I've gone to, into a lot of shops and been in there for quite a while and like touched everything because I'm a touchy kid. Geek alert. <laughs> uh, and th that is my, the bass that I brought is the best sounding bass I have. It's this guy something nash bill nash i think he's up in oregon and he just makes these beautiful sounding gu guitars and basses and my dad was like i have a bunch of these guitars i'm gonna give my son a bass and see if he it's the same quality it was it's the same quality i so is it a custom kind of job is it a handmade uh, is it made in oregon is it it's made in oregon the guy basically takes fender parts and just puts them all together and puts different pickups i 
don't know what pickups it has on it, but it just sounds so nice. It sounds better than any Fender I've played. Oh, I'm so excited to see this thing when it comes out. And what do you what do you play through? I have two Ampeg amps. One's just uh, like my practice one. It's a one. What you It's a one twelve or one ten. It's very. It's just an. I carry it around, throw it in my car. Just go is it a combo amps. kind of? It's a combo. Round. I both have combos. Both combos. I want to. I want a head and a cabinet so bad, but and then the other one's uh, 115. It's a right big, on. big one. Get a lot of noise from that. You have I, your eyes on any particular uh, head? I always want a Mark Bass. <laughs> those, those are so nice. <laughs> Just got one. They are awesome. They're awesome. Are you to the age yet where you look at that 115 and you say to yourself, "I got to put some casters on this"? Because hey, anymore, I got to be honest. I'm not carrying anything. I'm rolling it all. And maybe that's the old man in me. Here's the thing. I'm, I, I still have a little hop in my step, so I, they'll, they'll, there will be days where I just take my bass in one hand and the whole 1 and 15 in the, like, just another hand, and I just run up on stage and I put it all down quick because I'm young. I can take That's the awesome. pain. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a heck of a workout. And at least, hey, at least we're not drummers. Hey. <laughs> I know you don't. Carrying all that stuff. I know. My God. What were you, you thinking? Imagine? I don't know. <laughs> What were you thinking? That's I just awesome. like the exercise. I get cardio when I go up and off stage and carrying all my stuff, you know? <laughs> so Something singing, and here's a question I get a lot as a bass player. Singing and playing bass, it's uh, sometimes difficult, especially when you're starting out. Did you find it challenging at all? Oh, yes. I, I, for some reason, I would, like, sing, and I'd start playing the melody that I was singing to on the bass, and I'd be like, oh, that's not it, or I'd start singing the bass. I'd like, get it mixed up, and it would just be like, uh, 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 let's try and fix it, but, like, Luckily, the song I started singing on was, it was like C, C, C sharp, C. That was it. Nice. And I was, so that just gave me such an easier time sing, uh, singing to. But then now I'm getting into like some other stuff that has some really like technical things. And I had to sing backups and it just, it used to mess me up. And now I'm like getting it under control. Right on. Right on. How many hours a day would you say that you practice? Hmm. <clears throat> It depends on the day. If I have a lot of a lot of things to do, I like I'll I'll try and get one hour in. But if it's like like summer, like what it is now, and it's just like, oh, what do I do? Do I go? I'm gonna practice bass. And I sat down before I came here for like two hours, and I practiced some uh, weather report because I'm going off to the Berkeley College Music Camp for the summer five week or whatever it's called, and I have to do an audition piece for that. And I was like, I want to blow these guys away, so doing jacko nice right very, on. very cool. nice nice choice so whenever you practice do you practice like the independence of playing and singing at the same time like do you pick something and just like practice like that or do you i mean do you just strictly go bass most of the time i just just go bass yeah. and sometimes like if i'm playing the song that i'm gonna sing backups on i'll like mumble the backups too like so i just know the lyrics that's the kind of the main part i can make it sound okay pretty like pretty good but I just need to always remember the lyrics. Do you, uh, when you practice just playing your bass, do you usually practice particular songs or do you practice scales or do you practice different techniques that you want to try or do you go on and find some, un like, uh, have you seen Scott's bass lessons, Scott's online bass yeah. lessons? Or you, like, get hip to that and jump in and be like, oh, I'm going to hang out with this for a, whatever. It turns into half a day or something, you know. What's what? your what's or or is it just different depending on what you you have coming up? Well, it obviously if I have like a gig coming up and I'm like I need to practice more for that, I'll practice for that. But I have a I have had a bass teacher for like twelve years or not twelve years. That's wow, it's, uh, for six years, and he's just been like he like started me off on the right step. He was like, okay, you need to learn. Uh, learn how to read music you need to learn how to do this you because i used to play with like my thumb over the body and just just the worst technique in the world and then i like slowly got better and better and better until i i got very good and he's like okay you need to practice this this and this and he he gave me scales arpeggios uh and tons of other things right now he's having me run all all the scales and all 12 keys uh, going up to the like major seventh, coming down the minor second, going up the minor third, and yada 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 for all all twelve keys. And then he recently 
because uh, the bassist Lewis Johnson just died. Yeah. Uh, he was my teacher was his uh, one of his uh, students, and he was like they they were really good friends. So he's starting to teach me Lewis's technique and what he does, and that's just always been really fun because Lewis Johnson is in my eyes one of the best lap. Yeah, well, he's in the he's world. he's like. He's one of the maybe two or three innovators, really, yeah. of that kind of style mm -hmm. coming up through. That's cool. Okay, I've, I, have, uh, um, I have one more bassy bass question. And so... Shoot. As, as people go, and now I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. <laughs> I just had it on the tip Typical, of my tongue, and then, right? I got, <laughs> and then I got so interested. In, just like I said with his lyrics. Remember when I was talking about the lyrics? <laughs> Same thing happens with the questions. I got so interested in, the, in them talking about that his, his bass... Uh, anyways. Oh, I, here's what it is. Okay. Do you have a favorite, like, bass line when you're like, oh, my God, that was so innovative. That was so bad. Uh, I can't. That's, and you're like, I got I to gotta learn this. I have to learn this bass line note for note because it's so bad, man. It's so funky or it's so Ooh. rhythmic or whatever. I have, there's so many like that. Uh, oh, that's a loaded question. It is. It's hard to choose. <laughs> I, I, I have, like, seven. There's well, one. Yeah, the, just throw it out there. Yeah, just give us there's some. A, the give new, us a top ten. The new Muse album just came out, a song uh, called Reapers, and it's this really heavy bass line. It almost sounds like a bomb track from uh, Rage Against the Machine, and it's just so, so strong, and I was just like, I need to learn this, and I learned it with my bass teacher, and he was like, this is great. Like, we both, like, geeked out on it, and then... then I'm gonna have to go with like another Jacko one, like Ports of, Portraits of Tracy. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I like. As soon as I heard that, I was like, I need, I need to learn that, and I did. I spent like hours and hours just practicing that one song, and then Higher Ground, the Chili Peppers cover. That's always the one you sh every bassist should know. Uh, hmm. That's good for practicing the slap and pop. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, my bass teacher actually like showed me like, okay, since you're good enough to slap now. That Here's, was the one? Yeah, I was like, really? We're doing this? <laughs> and, and then Sounds like you're having a blast, too. Oh, yeah. yeah that's oh, yeah. cool. Well, that's what, I mean, you can tell how eclectic his musical you know, choices is. I mean, I right. don't know this much at this age. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, you go from Muse to Jaco to, to Chili, Chili Peppers. Old, old Chili Peppers, and then so on and so forth. I mean, yeah, there's, I listen to so much music because mm -hmm. my dad also like turned me on to music when I was very little. Like, one of the one of the favorite things about my life is fun fact about my life uh, is that my dad used to play me like ACDC as like a lullaby. Like, I was like <laughs> highway to hell, and, roll, and it's just it would just go on and go on and just go to sleep. Uh, For the record, that's good parenting. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fantastic parenting. <laughs> Hell's bells to go to sleep, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and. Another one that he used to play for me, like as I went to sleep, would be uh, Radiohead's "No Surprises," because that is like yeah, that's a, a sleeper song, song mm -hmm. and oh, that's just a, such a lovely melody. In fact, I saw, I actually saw your dad playing in a band, and he played that song back a few years. Actually, Francis, you were there too. They played that song. Oh yeah, we saw his dad play the guitar. Yeah, yeah. up in North uh, North Hollywood, I think. Yep, 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 yeah. We got to get your dad in here. Yeah, he's got. He's going to be talking about gear. <laughs> nice. We got to get him in here and talk about gear. That would be your episode, with <laughs> Francis, because you're the Guitars. gear. Head. Yeah, it would be Chris and I just sitting back and Dane just watching the two of them, like you know, shoot away at it. <laughs> Geek yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Geek alert. Talk about that. Um, so, let's talk about your band. Which one? <laughs> Finding oh. X. Well, yes. Let's talk let's about talk Finding about the, yeah, X the, because the, that's the good one, the main one. Yeah, the main one. Well, they're all good, right? They're because all good. You're they're in all it. good. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. one's you just make like my them favorite. Good. Yeah, yeah, this is your favorite <laughs> band. Uh, tell us about your band. How many members? We we have five members right now. We have uh, two guitar players. One's kind of the, the singer guitar player. Like he's he like picks up a guitar every once in a while. A drummer and a keyboardist. And I've been with them for almost a year now. I they picked me up like last summer, and but basically we're all they're they're they they all just graduated. So I'm gonna be left by myself. And basically. Uh, my my friend uh, Jackson, he picked me up and he was like, "Oh, dang, you play bass, right? Uh, I'm just, you should come play in my band." And I was like, "Okay, yeah." And I came and I they like we all clicked and it was start of 
what we call Finding X. Nice. And it was already called Finding X. Yeah, it was, it was already kind of established. X, it, it like became like what it is now. Right, right, right. You that. brought like a different personality to it. And, like, yeah. Your, yeah, your style. You helped it out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. So there's there's five of you, and does everybody sing or? Well, I mean, not the least, but I mean, does everybody have like a backing vocals and stuff like that? Uh, mainly just me and the main guitarist. Uh, we're the only ones that like do backing vocals. Everyone else is like, "Oh yeah, I can," but they're like, "No, no, you, you just you just don't sing." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that discussion is always an interesting one to have in a band. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> you guys, want to take a listen? Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's, let's um, yeah we got a little something it. here um, from Finding Us. Why don't you, you know, give a little intro of the song? Okay, quick. this song is called Berendo, and it's there's actually a street uh, in by Los Feliz, and it's called Berendo. And uh, apparently, I wasn't here for this. There was a party or something, and it was just, and they they just wrote a song about it because it was just a fantastic party and a fantastic time that's a heck of a party yeah. <laughs> write a song about it yeah i wish i was there <laughs> all right let's hear it berendo by finding x dane's band <laughs> Don't go up there. 
Nice. Finding yeah, X. Berendo. All right, cool. So w- were you on that recording or was that before that you were like, doing? Oh, literally a week before. And they they just had this other guy play bass and he was <laughs> It was very funny. I met him and it was just like, oh, yeah, yeah. You just come meet, learn the guys, for, uh, learn the lines from this guy. And I was like, oh, yeah. And it was just a super cool guy. He just And they're really simple. They're. I kind of put my own spice to like nice. each of the songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's interesting because I, that was a cool song. Yeah. And like bouncy. The first four measures of it, I was like, man, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> and I dug, I dug it. I dug the different places that it went, and uh, the fantastic voice. Now I'm interested. I got one more bass question. Sure. Shoot. Yeah. Now. Do you ha- do you pl- do you play through any effects any any pedals? I have two pedals. I used to just have one like like a month ago I got another one, but I used to just play through a big muff, a Pi big muff uh-huh. for bass, and I was like, oh, that's all I need. But I recently got a uh, what should I call it? Uh, an octave pedal. I'm trying to f- oh, figure yeah. out the name of it. It's the it's the Electro Harmonics one. The Pog, 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 Pog. That's what it is. The Pog Micro, and it's I, I got it so I could play like the, like Royal Blood. And like, do you know Royal Blood? It's I just, don't. It's basically a bassist and a drummer, but the bassist goes through a bunch of effect pedals, effects pedals, and goes into two different amps, and so it sounds yeah. like a whole, full band. Yeah. And I mainly got it like so I could do that, but then I realized it sounds so good. Oh, it thickens <laughs> things up. Oh yeah, it's... it just. I, one of my, another one of my like band, like one of my teachers was like, now nah, like you see, how could you have ever done this without this? I was like, yeah. It's, those are like my two main pedals besides a tuner pedal. Like, right. Everyone needs a tuner pedal or like a little tuner. That's right. Everybody kids, everybody needs to be in tune. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at me, man? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Francis. No more <laughs> That's awesome. So you like the you like the octave pedal. You like the big. Tell me, tell me what what does the Pi Big Muff pedal do for you? Do for your tone? It just makes everything either muddier and grittier, or just gives it fuzz. Like, I I can change it just so like 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 in a second or two, like I'll bend over like during us during in between songs. Like for uh, Muse, time is running out. It has this really like buzzy noise. The bass is just. It is just buzz, and f- for that you would use like you would go through. I think you tone turn the tone all the way up, or you do something, and then like for another song where it's just like a like a heavier metal song, you just switch it around. Just, right on. Yep. So it's got some tone knobs on it, mm-hmm. and you kind of fiddle with that. That's excellent. I remember uh, when I when I was in college a long time ago, there was a song by. Porno for Pyro is called Tahitian Moon. Mm-hmm. You guys familiar with that song? Yep. Yep. And and the bass line in that was definitely like a distorted fuzz. And I had, uh, and I say my dad always got me great gear. This was not great gear. <laughs> I had a, a PV, what was it? I don't even, I don't even know. It was a PV. Head, and the only cool thing on it was the thing had distortion. It had a <laughs> distortion knob. You crank up and had a great distortion tone. The rest of the tone <laughs> sucked. It was awful. <laughs> but the distortion tone was amazing. Nice. All right. I'm sorry. We're off that. No, nah, it's all good. <laughs> uh, uh, what was the question? We had, a, we had an email this week, Rich. What was, what was that about? Yeah, we had an um, email from um, listener Ryan. And he was asking, um, well, it's a topic we want to talk about. Anyway, and he was talking about asking if we could um, discuss how people protect their hearing whenever they play. Ryan happened to be a DJ, actually. He was a DJ, but of course, all are welcome here. DJs, musicians, everything like that. And this is an important thing for everybody. Musicians, drummers. Drummers, even us, yeah. We don't fall into the category of <laughs> DJ or musician. <laughs> You're special. But we all need to protect our hearing. So that was a, a discussion that he uh, asked us to... Um, to, to cover so we figured you know let's put it out there and discuss like what you know what are the appropriate measures to take i guess whenever mm-hmm. you're, you're you're trying to um do, yeah, you know i, I really think hearing. this is probably a topic that's overlooked mm-hmm. you know when you're growing up and especially when you're um very young listening to music and especially loud music you know you want to crank it you want to feel that but uh yeah it, it will catch up to you if it's if you're not really careful about that and 
you know, different situations, whether it be listening, um, headphones at home on your iPod, you know, blasting through your earbuds, you know, or going to, you know, um, a real loud rock concert and standing in front of the, you know, the PA all night and then you leave the concert with your ears ringing and, yeah. It it's, feels it's not, so good when it's so <laughs> loud, though, you know, like in the it, moment. It, it does, but uh, it, it will catch up to you at some point. So it, it's it's one of those things that I don't think um, everybody thinks about all the time. I didn't. Yeah. I did not. I did not. I, I mean, I did not take care of my hearing when I was a kid at all. Yeah. What about mm-hmm. now? What? <laughs> 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 yes, now. Yeah, I um, I try as much. You know, I, I've looked into maybe getting the, the custom uh, earplugs that you can get, you know, medically. They, they fit your ears and things like that. They cost mm-hmm. maybe, what, $200? I haven't done that yet, but I, I do try to get the ones that you, you know, the little uh, rubber stoppers or whatever they go in. Your, you can mm-hmm. get them from, like, a pharmacy or something like that. And I try to put those in. But I know they're not the best thing. And I need to do better, but it's something because for years, even up until maybe even five years ago, I never wore anything. And um, my ears were always ringing. I don't have the constant ringing in my ears, but I definitely notice there are certain frequencies that I know. Like, I know sometimes a fan will be running in the room, but I won't be able to hear it, mm. you know, and, unless I look at it and then I can hear it. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, and I, I like know it, they, they've made earplugs for, I guess, targeting musicians. And I think... Um, there's all kinds of models out there, and I think you know, we'll leave it up to everybody up there to choose their own. But the, the, there's a wide variety of you know, brands and styles and models. But uh, and and I think yeah. they they filter through different frequencies as well, right? Some right. Yeah, I think the idea thing. is to bring down the you know um, the sound pressure without uh, affecting certain frequencies that are good, for, you know, for musicians to hear on stage or. Yeah, I never even thought about it until I saw Rich wearing wearing uh, earplugs when we played, and uh, I wish I would have because I do have tinnitus or tinnitus or whatever. Mm-hmm. I have a constant, steady, forever ring in my ears, and uh, you know, and I you start thinking about it, H- humans have evolved, but your ears are still sensitive enough to be outside of the industrial age where you're listening for a freaking bear coming to attack you or whatever <laughs> else, you know, you can hear, yeah. you know, kids can hear everything. And, uh, and then we jam, you know, when all of a sudden when Walkmans came out and everything and you all of a sudden you have headphones and that. And I actually, in the last, uh, a band I was in previously, we had in-ear monitors, but we didn't have like, uh, the drummer circled off. So we just turned the in-ear monitors up and, uh, I think that's a huge and important topic to talk to kids about is protecting their hearing because it's it's irreversible. Yeah, it doesn't. It's, come it's out. irreversible. It's and, not and, coming back. And, and that no. ring is annoying as all get out. Now, yeah, I want to ask you: when you say you have that constant, do you hear it when it's quiet, or do you hear it anytime? Like even I, right now? I don't hear it now because there's there's enough. there's enough background noise and everything else. Right. But when it's quiet, or sometimes I notice it more than than other times, and it's. It's just something that you get used to. You yeah. know, it's just something you get used to over time. But it's tough to sleep, I guess. Huh? Well, I would sleep with a fan on, and yeah. I got a noisemaker, and I got a air purifier. I got twenty-seven <laughs> things going, so I can go to sleep at night without the constant. Yeah, yeah. And you talk to kids about it because I'm teaching a garage band class right now, and I go by, and kids have headphones on. I'm like, man, if I can hear it, it's too loud. Yeah. It's too loud, and you, you sound like an old song. man when you say that. Yeah. But I, it's yeah, also true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> There's that old slogan, like, yeah. right? If it's too loud, you're too you're old. Too old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's all. It's more like if it's too loud. You, I don't. Yeah. No, I, I have nothing witty to say there, but it, it is. It's it's a real issue, I think, for everyone, but in particularly musicians who, you know, this is such a this is a lifelong passion. It's not something that you kind of do when you're. In high, it's not little league baseball where it's fun and then you go back. This is the yeah, this is this for music life. Music yeah. is a thing you can do forever and <laughs> mm-hmm. ever and ever, unless you can't hear anymore. Right. You know, I, I, there's always the famous story about uh, Jeff Beck, right? You know, who who has almost no hearing left. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Pete, uh, Sa- Pete, Pete Townsend, Townsend as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's something you got to take care of, and and I don't know the exact answer because I still don't play with with uh, Earplugs. Earplugs, because it, 
And now it just sounds different to me. Everything sounds different. Maybe I need to get custom I, ones or whatever. I, I think it it was hard for me to start whenever I started wearing them. Like I, but I guess you kind of start to get used to it. You start to get used to the sound. Like it, What I used to do, actually, is I would almost zone out when I was playing because it would muffle this. To me, it sounded so muffled that I wasn't even part of it. So while I was playing, I would start to daydream. And there were times <laughs> that I would mess up in the middle of a song because I was just... <laughs> You know, kind of going muscle memory, just playing and not really in my own mind is somewhere else. You hey, know? Rich, the song's it, over. Yeah, Rich. exactly. I'm sitting there just playing like two Another different. Another yeah. piece of the puzzle. <laughs> Where we're learning things today. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it, it took a while to get used to it, but now I'm pretty used to it. And But I'll still, you know, sometimes take away. If it's a song that we're playing that I like, I'll yeah. pull them out so that I can hear it. You, you still want to hear it full on blast. You want to feel it. When you, you know, know there's not a big organ crescendo coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So I'm interested exactly. to hear from, from Dane, who's obviously uh, younger and, you know, it, definitely earplugs aren't that rock and roll. So, Dane, what, do you use ear protection? I, I do and I don't. Whenever I'm just playing just and I'm just going, I'm going. It's just, no, I, there's never earplugs around. But if it's, like, to the point where, like, my ears start to hurt, I've been playing for, like, three hours with a band, practicing for like an upcoming gig, I'll put, like, headphones in, like, like Skull Candy headphones and just be like, okay, that's good enough. But I have, I have this, I have negative ear pressure where it basically, when you go up an airplane and your ears get all full of just air and then, oh, you, then you pop it, I can't do that. That's me forever. That's kind of how I just am. But I've gotten used to it. I've learned to cope with it, and it's, I believe it's made me better a better musician because I really focus on like more just feeling the instrument. That sounds weird, but I have to feel the bass. I have to feel the drums, and that and it, it gives me a lot better ear musically. So, and I don't know how else to explain it. So, I whenever I put head like those little foam headphones in. It they just sound everything sounds so terrible, but when I take them out and I can actually tell what's happening, I can figure out like oh if this if it's going to this this chord, oh it must go to this chord and like that's how I figure out most of the songs. It's like if I want to learn a song, I'll listen to the song and then I'll play along. But I I just don't like the whole thing of earphones. It's just something in your ear that's blocking off the noise i want all the noise i want to hear i want to hear everything it's my but my dad my dad was the same way as me and now he's almost deaf it's very terrible because he still plays his his guitar full blast it's it's he doesn't just chill and play quietly it's he's cranking like it right. to nine we're There's, all still you know young and at heart and want to hear it loud man well, you know, guitar, the players, page. guitar players have that certain <laughs> special thing too where it's like true. you ha it has to be loud to bring out that tone <laughs> mm -hmm. you know I've, i don't know how many of that. i can't get the same tone unless it's at this particular yeah. volume well you know what i've done oh like, dude i'm in the other room <laughs> I, I, I have have this thing where at time depending on the the band or the situation if certain gigs are so loud like you know when it's going to be very very loud and it could be ear piercing i mean i have them on standby sometimes i'll put them in one ear that's you know directed towards like the rest of the band you know and it's, it's not the most ideal thing but I, I do try to be conscious of that but there's just little things that i would do like i would do it in half you know one ear or i would put it maybe not completely in but enough to hear um the frequencies and enough to hear what's, what's happening with the rest of the band i don't necessarily just block it where it's completely muffled you know, and again, I'm also still trying different types of uh, earplugs. Well, and relatively yeah. speaking, after playing with uh, Rich and Francis for a number of years, relatively speaking, you guys play pretty quiet. I mean, not quiet, but you guys aren't, you know, Rich is not smashing the crash cymbal over and over, you know, <laughs> three out of four beats in the measure. And Francis is that isn't wrong? turning it to 11. Francis is the only guitar player I've ever looked at and said, You're hey, making me sound like a horrible drummer, actually. <laughs> what are we supposed to do? <laughs> God, I hope not. I hope that's not the benchmark that we're aiming hey, for. Wait till our next gig. Yeah. Uh, Rich and I, Rich and I are going to drown you out. I think you're complaining. 
I think you're complaining about us. I always thought that was funny. It was like, hey, the bass has got to come down. I'm like, man, nobody's ever told me to turn down the bass. Yeah, right? Always these cats are crazy loud. <laughs> well, but yeah. It, not it, on, Well, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it is something that really um, everybody, especially the young musicians, should at least, you know, pay attention to because you do want to preserve your hearing. It, yeah, and not only just playing, but also like when you're going to see a show, like all of it. You know, I mean, that's where some of the loudest is whenever you yeah. go to see a show, you know, so. And, and things you don't think about, riding your lawnmower. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's an easy one. Like, you don't need to worry about hearing the the different tones your lawnmower makes, you know, mm -hmm. or you, you're you working with heavy equipment, uh, flying in an airplane at time, whatever. You know, different things where you have loud industrial noises, you know, as especially as a musician, you have to. You have to go in there thinking, I'm going to protect my ears. And probably a mistake that some people make would be to put headphones on and make the music louder than right. the lawnmower or yeah. whatever the industrial thing is. You know what I mean? That's kind of like anti-protecting. Yeah. But um, so, can, yeah, I yeah, nerd, I, can I nerd for one second? Yeah, go for Just it. Biologically speaking, what happens in the ears, I believe... And correct me, Dane, if I'm wrong, because you probably just had a biology and anatomy class. Yeah, but there are biology. little things called cilia inside your ear canals, the little hair little follicles. Yeah. And I think those are what get damaged whenever you like have loud music. And as soon as there's a little bit of damage there, that's it. They don't, they don't grow back. They don't fix themselves. That's it. So those are the things that vibrate and send signals into your brain. And... Once it, they're gone, they're gone. And that's the loss of hearing. And, mm -hmm. and, and for the, the constant ring in your ears, mm -hmm. they don't even know exactly what causes that. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know if it's, it's – it has to be some combination with, with hearing damage because there's been enough evidence of, you know, rock musicians or, you know, whatever. If you're operating a jackhammer yeah. of, of having tinnitus or tinnitus. Does anybody know how that's pronounced? I've heard both. Okay. I really don't know which, which is right. Maybe somebody can give us the phonetical – I don't know. Anyways, yeah, no. but but they don't know exactly what makes your ears ring, and there's no way to make it stop. So if you can imagine after that loud, you know, when you go in 1971 and watch the Who's stadium tour, mm -hmm. and they're cranking at 110 decibels, and your ears are ringing for the next day, imagine that going on for your life. Oh. You know, that's... Heed the warning, kids. Heed, Heed the warning. The, yeah, all of us. We, we're all in the same boat, no matter what. Yeah, our and also, if, if there's if there are any musicians out there that have tried uh, those um, certain earplugs that they've had good experience with, you know, hit us up and let us know. And uh, I'm sure we're all interested in hearing that. Yeah, we all need it. Yeah, or if you're a manufacturer who wants to give us some free earphones, to, to, to try <laughs> anything. Out. Yeah, we're help poor. us. Help we're us broke, our, right? Yeah. That's what we do. All right. So, um, hey, Dane, uh, any last things you want to plug? You got anything coming up with your with your band? I, we have X? two gigs coming up. One, one's literally this weekend, so it's just this little festival called Inca. Mm -hmm. But there's another one the next Saturday. And, What's uh, the date? June 26th, I believe. Okay. We're playing at a little club uh, called Amplify, and it's just – we have a lot of new songs we have not showed yet, so nice. and that we will be recording next week, I believe, if everything goes according to plan. Uh, yeah, and we'll – it should be a very fun gig. Nice. What time does it start? It starts at like 7, I believe. Okay. Amplify, that's on uh, Melrose? Yep, Melrose. In it's LA? right by that Astro Burger. Nice. nice. And so if, if anyone's interested in uh, checking out your band, where could they get the info? Uh, we have a Facebook page. It's just Finding X. You might have to type in Los Angeles or whatever. Mm -hmm. And also the SoundCloud is Finding X Los Angeles, I believe. And finding X, the letter X, not E X, as nope. in like X yeah, girlfriend just, or something. Just like. the Ain't nobody letter. trying to find their X. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> also, hey, we should we should do a quick. Uh, if you're going to be in Pasadena and you are a soccer fan on July 21st, the Diggum Crew will be playing in the Fan Zone at the Rose Bowl. That's right. So if you want to yeah. come and mix it up with a hundred thousand people, <laughs> and uh, even if you don't want to go in for the soccer game, hang out. There's going to be a lot of fun, and the Diggum Crew is going to be playing. In the fan zone, the fan zone band, whatever yeah. that entails. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be the house band, right? That's yeah. right. House band, the Rose we'll Bowl, the them. fan zone. Sounds like a lot of fun. All right, so I guess that's about it. This is going to wrap up episode number four with Dane Meyer from Finding X. We are Tune Up and Jam. Please email us with any of your feedback, any uh, questions, comments, anything we talked about. Uh, check out Dane at his website. 
uh, with the Facebook. We are at um, the email podcast at tuneupandjam.com. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram, all that other stuff. Thanks, Dane. Thanks for showing up, man. Yeah, thanks. Doug. And that's about it. Let's wrap it up. Thanks, guys.